1527, again, the Muslims working for the Spanish, as in Mori, a Moroccan Berber, was a great explorer. And it is reported that a group was sent out from Florida, from Florida, and, and we aren't even taught this in the history books. A group was sent out, 300 Spaniards, which included this Muslim, and they went from Florida to the West Coast and back to Texas. Only three people, along with Azenmori, survived. The rest were killed by the natives. And it is reported that he was the first person, the first explorer, to enter into the Pueblo Indian villages. But they wipe him out of the history book. And he was the one that led the conquistadores across to help them understand what actually existed in the Southwest. They also, when they tell you the founding of this country, they tell you about Jamestown. And you think that the country was founded with the British in Jamestown, but we know that the conquistadores, the Spanish, were here before the British. And they established St. Helena in South Carolina, 1566. And it was overrun by the British. And records are now showing that there were hundreds of these Muslim Morescos who were living in St. Helena, and instead of submitting to the British, they went into the interior, and they mixed with the native people, all in the Carolina areas, intermarried with the people, and they settled into the interior. In 1586, the English pirate, Sir Francis Drake, commanded 30 English ships, and they made a daring raid on Brazil, and they liberated 400 Portuguese and Spanish prisoners. Amongst them is reported that 300 or more were Muslims, Morescos. Francis Drake carry, carried his ships to America, and history also tells us that 200 of these people were left on the shore, and the British uh, citizens who wanted to return, they were tired of America, they wanted to return, they went with Francis Drake, and these people landed in America, went up into the mountains, and they met the other, the other ones. These Morescos are now, they are called Melungeons. And they met uh, this other group, and they settled, and they intermingled with the native populations living in the Carolinas, living in Georgia, all in the interior area. And they called themselves Portuguese. Anytime you see them, they will call themselves Portuguese. We used to say Geechee. So if you have, you Afro-American, part of my family, maybe many people, you have somebody in your family say, you light-skinned Geechee. Okay, it's like, a, it, this is a group of people that was known, that's known in America, especially in the South. They're known. But where did they come from? A startling uh, research just done within the last few years by Brent Kennedy, who was one of these Melungeons. He found out he had this disease, sarcoidosis, a terrible disease. And when he checked out this disease, he found out that the only people who have this disease are the people who live along the Mediterranean. The Spanish, the Portuguese, Sicilians, uh, Moroccans, Libyans, Turkish. These are the people who have this disease. And they checked it genetically to these groups. And so when he checked out history more, and he was given a grant to check out history, he found out that in the mid-1600s, there were people living amongst the Powhatans and related tribes of Eastern Virginia and North Carolina who were described as dark like Indians, but called Portuguese. The similar people in, in South Carolina called themselves Turks. The early 17th century Powhatan Indian description of heaven is nearly word for word like the description found in the Quran itself. In 1784, Tennessee Governor John Sevier records an encounter with people in the western North Carolina with dark skin, reddish brown complexions. They were supposed to be of Moorish descent, he said, of Moorish descent. In eastern uh, Tennessee in the late 1700s, Jonathan Swift, an English man, married a Melungeon woman and utilized Melungeon men in his own silver mining operation. And his dark-skinned companions were known as Mecca Indians. 
And when they describe these people, they describe, they said these people were really good with silver crafts. They were crafts, and this is what coming out of Spain, the Muslims were the crafts artisans. They were really good artisans, and they said they used to fall down in prayer on the ground a number of times during the day facing east. This is in America, and Qurans have been found, information has been found, it's being unearthed to show the presence of these people. And so, to come to a conclusion, what is now coming to the surface is that anybody coming from the southeastern part of the United States, whether you consider yourself white, black, Portuguese, Geechee, mixed, Indian, whatever you think you are, that if your name, if your last name, and there's a lot of names, but the most famous ones, if your last name is Adams, Adkins, Bell, Bennett, Berry, Bowling, Chavis, Coleman, Collins, Gibson, Goins, Hall, Jackson, Lopez, Moore, um, Mullins, Nash, Robinson, Sexton, and Williams. If you have any one of those names, then more than likely, you're a Melungeon. This is crucial information. This is white Americans too. So what that means is that these people are tied into Muslims, that in their background are Morescos, Melungeons coming out of Spain, hiding their identity and becoming part of America. And proof has come to us that Nancy Hanks, the mother of Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, was a Melungeon. That is definite. And so you may be saying the President of the United States was a Muslim or you got a Muslim family. Abraham Lincoln. This is critical information, which is now being um, put together and coming to the light. 